on Zoom tonight. I'm really excited about the word that God is going to allow her to share with us on tonight. And uh, again, we have been talking about the government being on the shoulders of God and that we are in the 12th month and that 12th means uh, apostolic alignment and it means uh, government government also, because we were talking about how we have things and rules of the government of this world, but when the government is on the shoulder of God, how we continue to win, that this government of this world will try to set us up to fail, will try to destroy us, will, will sabotage and do all types of things, but the government that is upon God's shoulders, that it, we we continue to win. So as we again are giving Tara the opportunity to uh, log back in uh, for tonight, we are going to cancel every distraction because I know God has something amazing for her. There she is. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I had some technical difficulties. Please That's forgive me. <laughs> we're, we're, it's wonderful. Thank you for, for joining back, Tara. So it's, it's in I'm your so hands sorry. Tonight. Thank you. <laughs> guys, ready? Thank you guys for joining Zoom tonight. Thank you, Prophet Zanya, for giving me the opportunity to share um, God's word with you tonight. Uh, Prophet Z last Thursday was teaching us about um, how the government is on God's shoulders. So I want to stay in the flow of that tonight, if I may. So here we go and let's get started. We are now approaching the end of the year of 2022. We are also in the last month, of course, of December. And the biblical meaning for the number 12 is government and apostolic alignment. So tonight, my lesson is going to be about what God's kingdom is. God's kingdom is the government established by God with a king chosen by God. Who is the king of God's kingdom, you may ask? It is Jesus Christ, of course. Jesus as king is greater than all human rulers and is called the king of those who rule as kings and the Lord who, who rules as Lord. That is found in 1 Timothy 6, 15. He has the power to do far more good than any human ruler on earth. Amen. That is where God's kingdom is in heaven. That is why the Bible calls it the heavenly kingdom. That's 2 Timothy 4, 18. Although God's kingdom is in heaven, it will rule over the earth. What makes Jesus an outstanding king? We already know. One thing, he will never die. And Jesus as king, I'm sorry, I'm slipping my notes if y'all hear all this rattling. Jesus as king, there will be no more sickness, no more death, no more illnesses. Um, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to tell my tell my lesson. So I'm going to keep moving. I have a lot of notes to read you guys. So just bear with me and um, stay with me. So here we go. Sorry. The Bible also explains soon after Jesus became king. Um, I'm sorry. I skipped something. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. Please forgive me. Okay, here we go. Back on to him. So now I just read that um, the kingdom of God is the government and Jesus is chosen to be God to be the king kingdom king of um, the kingdom of God. Sorry. Yes. There are another there is another truth about God's kingdom. Jesus will not rule alone. He will have co-rulers. I've never heard about that. So we're going to learn about it tonight. Apostle Paul told Timothy, if we go on enduring, we shall rule together as kings. Second Timothy 2, 12. Yes, Paul, Timothy and other faithful ones who have been selected by God will rule together with Jesus in the in the heavenly kingdom. How many do you think will have that privilege? I'm going to tell you. The Apostle John was given a vision, and when he saw the Lamb, Jesus Christ, standing on the Mount Sinai, Sion, excuse me, the royal position in heaven, with him were a hundred and forty thousand having his name and the name of the Father written on their foreheads. 
Who are these 144,000, you may ask? John himself tells us. These are the ones who keep following the lamb no matter where he goes. These were brought from among kin mankind as first fruit to God and to the lamb. That is found in Revelations 14, 1 through 4. Yes, they are faithful followers of Jesus Christ, especially chosen to rule heaven with him. After being raised out of the dead, out, excuse me, raised out of death into heaven, they are to rule as kings over the earth along with Jesus. That is Revelations 5.10. Since the days of the apostles, God is has been selecting faithful Christians in order to complete the number 144,000. To arrange to arrange for Jesus and the 144,000 to rule mankind is very loving. For one thing, Jesus knows what it is to be human-like and to suffer. Paul said that Jesus is not one who cannot emphasize with our weakness, but one who has been tested in all respects like ourselves, but without sin. That's Hebrews 4, 15, 5, and 8. His co-rulers too have suffered and endured as humans. In addition, they have struggled with imperfections and cope with all kinds of sicknesses. Surely they will understand the problems that humans faced. So what I've read and my understanding since I've been studying, um, like I said before, the kingdom of God is the government. Jesus is, is going to be king of the heaven and he's going to have 144,000 co-rulers, I say army, um, with him to rule over the earth from heaven. Let me keep going. The Bible also explains that soon after Jesus made king, king of God's kingdom, he will go to war against Satan. That is in Revelations 12, 7 through 10. Verse 10 describes two very important events. God's kingdom begins to rule with Jesus as king and Satan is thrown out of heaven down to earth. As he, as we learn, these events have already, are already happening right now, these bad events. The Bible describes the joy, um, the joy and the faithful angels um, celebrating after, after Satan and his demons were thrown out of heaven. Um, be glad in the heavens and you will reside in them. Revelations 12, 12. There is now total peace and unity in heaven because everyone there is doing God's will. But life on earth is very different. As we know, terrible things are happening to people because the devil has come down and he has great anger, knowing that he has a short period of time here on this earth that is found also in Revelations 12 and 12. Satan is furious. He has been thrown down of, out of heaven and he knows he will be destroyed very soon. He does everything he can to cause trouble, pain, and suffering for all over the earth. So we see the bad things happening right now here on earth with uh, food shortages, waters, water supplies being contaminated, um, so many things. Social media is crazy. Um, Facebook, all that other stuff is crazy. But I wanted to share um, a story something that happened well i come in contact encounter with a lady um she tristan was my son tristan was at a basketball camp and she is she was a she's a minist administrator at this really predominantly white school in the ballantine area she's a black lady and we were just talking about different things happening in the school system um, she said her son has been in private school and charter school and Tristan's in charter school now. He's never been in public. So her son, this was her first, his first year in charter school. I'm sorry, uh, public school in Ballantyne area. So one of the things she said that really disturbed her was, um, this was five years ago, that the white students, I'm just being honest, the white students, um, some of the white students, 
were wearing a certain color bracelet on their wrist. And she said she just thought it was fashionable and, you know, a fashion statement at the time. So um, as the years, as the year had passed on, um, it, bad things were happening, meaning students were being sent to the office, kids were getting in trouble for silly things. But um, to come to find out that the bracelets that the kids were wearing meant a certain color, meant a certain sexual act. So I don't know what color, whatever color meant, but say green means whatever, pink means whatever. So that was a, a trend in the public school in this predominantly white area, the Ballantyne area. Um, some of you, if you guys are from Charlotte, you may know where I'm talking about. But anyway, that was disturbing. That was five years ago. Bring it to prison. So my son, um, he, he probably met up that I'm telling the story, but he'll be okay. Um, he gets in the car and, you know, I'm a mama and I notice I don't miss anything. I notice I notice everything. So he had this bracelet on. Just hear me. So don't judge. Just hear me. So I was like, oh, son, where did you get that from? He's like, oh, one of my friends gave it to me. So it made me really upset because I went back five years ago when I had the conversation with the administrator at this black lady, the administrator of this school. So when I get home, I get on a computer, I'm just doing research and I'm like, what does this color mean? What does this color mean? And it didn't really mean anything, but as a parent, I just had a, uh, a flashback of what the conversation was with me and the lady. So that was one of the things that as a parent, as parents, we have to be aware what's going on in our kids' life, what's going on in the school systems. It is so important once they get older, you know, you just have to keep an eye on them. Don't smother them or hover over them. You just have to be aware of their phone, be aware of what they're watching, be aware of, you know, who they're talking to. I know some parents, they tell me, well, I can click into my 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 child's phone and, and know what they're doing, this, that, and other. In a way, that's invade a privacy. Hopefully, I can trust my son and we have an open relationship to where he will tell me what's going on and all this other stuff. So that was five years ago about that. So bring it to present. My son was like, yeah, mama, everybody wears these bracelets. And that really bothered me. So I Googled it. His didn't really mean anything, but I just had a flashback of the conversation, like I said, of me and the lady that had. Um, <laughs> and I just, I don't know. I We have to be more aware and involved in our children's life. Just don't put the cell phones in their, in their faces. Just don't be watching anything crazy. If you can monitor that, that will be very great because we need to know what's going on because the devil is mad. He's trying to turn your kids against you. He's trying to turn your spouses, your friends against you, your co-workers. It's just a mess and we just have to stay covered in prayer and uh, we got to look, log on to Mars Worship Life Center, send your prayer requests in. If, if people acting crazy in your life, so Z and Marv, excuse me, Prophet Z and and a and Prophet I'm sorry Prophet Marvin can uh, pray for these issues and problems that you're having. Let me go on. I'm sorry. I don't want to stay long before you. So let me continue. <laughs> the Bible describes. Okay, I read that. Sorry, I lost where I'm at. I'm right here. Okay. So let me read this again. But the life on earth is very different. Terrible things happen to people because the devil has come down. And he knows that his time here on earth is short. He is furious. He's causing trouble. He, um, people are suffering with pain all over this earth. But God's will for the earth will not change. He still wants perfect humans or beings to live forever in paradise on earth. Psalms 37, 39. So how will God's kingdom make this possible? Daniel 2 44 says in the days of those kings the Lord of heaven will set a king kingdom that will never be destroyed amen and this kingdom will not will not be passed on to any other people 
it will crush and put the end to these kingdoms that are, are on, on earth right now. And alone, it will stand forever. What does this teach teaches us about God's kingdom? I will tell you. First, it tells us that God's kingdom will begin ruling in the days of those kings. This means that other governments will still exist on earth when the kingdom starts to rule. Second, it will tell that it will tell us that God's kingdom would last forever and never be replaced by another government. And third, there will there will be a war between the God's kingdom and the government of this world. Hmm. So we already know who's going to win <laughs> and become and become only. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. And become the only government ruling over the earth. Then humans will have the best government they could ever have. How will God's kingdom take over rulership of the earth? <clears throat> before the, the before the final war, war, excuse me, called the War Armageddon, demons will mislead the kings of the entire inhabited earth to gather them together to war on the great day of God, the, the Almighty. Yes, human governments will fight against God's kingdom. That is found in Revelations 16, 4 and 16. So I had to pause and think, how can the devil form an army to fight against God's kingdom? We already know he's going to lose. But for him to have the audacity to try to fight against God, Jesus, the 144,000 co-rulers, God's angels, all of, just think about that, guys, for a moment. Why do we need God's kingdom? There are at least three reasons. First, we are sinners saved by grace. So we get sick and we die. But the Bible says that under God's kingdom, we will live forever. In fact, John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whosoever believeth in him will have everlasting life. Second reason they will need God's kingdom as, excuse me, is that we are surrounded by wicked people. Many lie, cheat, and are immoral. We cannot do anything to remove them. We wish we could get rid of people, but that will be left up to God. People who keep doing wicked things will be destroyed during the Armageddon. Psalms 37, 10. The third reason why we need God's kingdom is human governments have been weak, cruel, or corrupt. They are not interested in helping people to obey God's word. And we see that, like I said, so much now how we're so distracted. It was about Kanye, if you know, if you keep up with that, the Kanye and, and the Kyrie. And then, you know, um, this this guy, this dancer guy named Switch or Twitch or whatever his name is, they say he just died at 40. Um, he committed suicide. He left his family, a wife and three kids. To me personally, this is all distractions keeping us from the truth about what's really going on. Like I said, the water's being tainted in some cities. You know, there's there's famines, food shortages, big farms are being destroyed. Um, the towers, I don't know what you call those things that farmers put their, their seeds in. Um, the halo, not halos, I'm sorry, I don't know what they are, but they're being destroyed. They're just falling down and, and with no reason, without, wet, without weather, the weather's not doing it. Thunder didn't strike. I mean, lightning didn't strike it to make it fall down. It's just all this craziness going on in on this earth because the devil is mad and and he wants us distracted from God. He don't want us to pray. He don't want us to be in God's face. He 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 don't want us to be on our knees praying. He didn't want you to be on Zoom tonight. But thank God that you guys log, logged on. Um, yeah, I probably was wanting to hear past Prophet Z Amar, but it's me. So I just pray I'm saying something to help you guys to be awoke. Be awoke. Be aware of what's going on. Be aware of what's going on. And I wanted to tell something else. I saw something on Instagram. Um, this lady posted a video. She 
was at the gas station late at night. So ladies, please do not go to the gas station late at night. If you do, please have someone with you. And she said, as she was pumping gas, a guy gets out of his car. He wasn't even pumping gas. And he put a paper towel between the gas handle. Because you know, when you reach to get the gas handle, you know, you have to, you will have to move this paper out of the way. Uh, I think it was paper towel. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, she saw a young lady. So happened a young lady by herself going to that pump. So she ran over there and she's like, no, 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 don't touch that. Don't touch that because it can be contaminated with something. Come to find out, um, I've been saying this stuff on Instagram where traffickers, people are trafficking men. I mean, not women, men, excuse me, young girls, children, whatever. Um, and what probably was on the paper towel, once you touch it, you get this chemical on your hands and you don't think nothing about it. You just throw, you know, throw it on the ground, start pumping your gas. So as you pumping your gas, after you don't touch this paper towel, excuse me, whatever, you know, you, you put the put the gas handle back on the thing and you get in your car, you probably feel dizzy and sick and you'll pass out. So once the person, the, the female, I say female passes out, the kidnappers or the traffickers come to your car and kidnap you and you're gone. So. I saw that on Instagram and I sent that to as many of my female friends and family on Instagram that I follow or that follow me. Please, please, ladies, please, please be aware of your surroundings. It, they can even drop money on the ground and want you to pick it up. Once you pick it up, they come behind you, knock you out and kidnap you. Lord, if if it's a million dollars on the ground, please don't pick it up. Please don't call the cops. Let them pick it up. If they pass out, let them kidnap them, but not you. I'm just saying that that's silly. But if you see money on the ground, please don't touch it. Please don't touch it. Even if you know if you need money for gas, contact somebody, somebody a cash app you and they'll send you some money. But please don't please don't touch any money or anything. That's on the ground. I'm sorry. Okay, let me continue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. The third reason why we need God's kingdom is that the human governments have, um, we have, are we cruel and corrupt? They are not interested in helping God's people to obey God's God. Um, the Bible also says that man is dumb. The Bible also says man has dominated man to uh, his harm. That is found in Ecclesiastes 8 and 9. After the Armageddon, God's kingdom will make sure that God's, God's will is done on earth. It will remove Satan and his demons, Revelations 20, 1 and 3. Eventually, nobody will get sick or die. Because of the ransom, all faithful humans will be able to live forever in paradise, Revelations 22, 1 and 3. The kingdom will sanctify God's name. What does this mean? It means that when God's government rules the earth, all humans will honor, honor God's name. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> and that's all I have, Z. I could go on, but that's that's all I have for now. Thank you so much. Awesome job, Tara. Thank you so much for sharing that tonight. That was awesome. She's talking about the kingdom, what the kingdom is, what the kingdom is, and talking about the 144,000 that will co-rule with him. And Marvin has the scripture of that. That's so powerful. And I will say this too. I think it not strange that God would allow you to teach out of the book of Revelation uh, the last book of the Bible, and we are in the last month of this year. Amen. And then the 144, you know, 12 times 12 is 144. Okay, I, I, I see what God was doing with you, Sister Tara. 12 times 12 is 144,000. You said 144,000. It says it in his word in Revelation that 144,000 will co-rule with him as he comes back. It's written. And then it says also in Revelation 7 and 18 about there being a seal, um, that there being a seal. Marvin, do you have that scripture? 
And can you read it? The one about the 144. Revelation 7 and 4. Revelation 7 and 4. You can sit right here if you want to. Okay. Um, so Revelation 7 and 4 says, I heard many, I heard how many were sealed, 144,000. Those who were sealed were from every tribe of the people of Israel, 12,000 from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Azure, um, 12,000 from the tribe of uh, Nephetili. 12 from the uh, 12,000 from the tribe of uh, Manassas, uh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 12, from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, uh, 12,000 from uh, the tribe of uh, Zebulon, 12,000 from the uh, tribe of Joseph, and 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin. Now, those are 12,000 from the 12 tribes that, uh, that, that was seen by, by, by John. Now, if you go ahead and read down just a little further in verse number nine, those are the 144,000 pure virgins who were singing a song that no one ever knew or never heard. But also look down in verse number nine, where it says, these things I saw, after these things I saw, uh, hold on just a second. See, mute, mute your, we're getting feedback. Um, in verse number nine, it says, after these things, I saw a large crowd from every nation, tribe, people, and language. No one was able to count how many people there were. They were standing in front of the throne and the lamb. They were wearing white robes, holding palm branches in their hands and crying out in a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne with the leaders and the four living creatures. They bowed in front of the throne with their faces, touching the ground, worshiped God, and said, Amen, praise, glory, wisdom, thanks, honor, power, and strength be to our God forever. Amen. So what he was saying is he saw 144,000 from the 12,000, uh, I mean, sorry, from the 12 tribes of Israel. But then in the midst of all those people, of 144,000, there was a number of people that were innumerable that cannot be counted. And those people that he saw are you guys on this phone, on this Zoom tonight. Those are the people that he could not count because the number of people were so large, too many to count, but those people were the people that were praising, worshiping, and giving honor to the throne, giving honor to the Lamb of God. And I'm saying those people, which I'm saying you guys, because it's saying, if you read further, maybe in chapter, uh, maybe a little further down here, and also if you go over to chapter 14, these people wash their robes and clean them. They are white. That means they wash themselves of their sinful nature on earth and they clothe themselves in the glory of God. That means they are in the purity of God. When you clothe yourself and you get rid of the sins, you are now being washed and you have been made whole. Now you're wearing the presence of God. Therefore, you are amongst those who are praising the Father and who are praising the Lamb and giving honor because you are serving the Most High. You have made it in. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, this is was this was the fourth angel. So during this time, these now are you guys that were caught up and saying, "Hello, I am here. I'm praising God." Now, after that, there are more angels that are going to come and. And the trumpet is going to sound. And now here comes the destruction for those who are left on the earth that will have to now attempt to die. But death is going to leave them because now death is afraid of what's coming. People that are left on earth want to die but cannot die. Now they will be tormented even before they are now cast into the lake of fire. They too will go through tormenting and 
and destruction before they are ever sent to the lake of fire for eternity. Great job tonight, Tara. Thank you so much for answering the call when, uh, when, when Mars reached out to you. We really appreciate that. Don't worry about being nervous. I know you worry. I know you were probably talking about, you know, you were saying in front of people, never, don't worry about it. As long as you're talking and speaking the word of God, you can never go wrong. Hey Amen. Awesome. Awesome job again, Tara. Thank you so much. And thank you, Marvin, for, for uh, just kind of summarizing the, the lesson on tonight. And then some things, a few things, the notes that I was I took also, I love that her opening statement was what the kingdom is and what the kingdom is. Again, we know that we do not have to grow the kingdom of God. We're advancing it. Amen. Because it's already established. And what is the kingdom? She came out of 1 Timothy 6 and 15, but also the word revelation. It, this is the way that God reveals himself. God reveals himself. In this 12th, in this month of, of, of December, as we're coming to the end of this month, God is truly revealing himself in such a way in our lives. Uh, Revelation 7 and, and 1 and 8, when Marvin was talking about that and reading that scripture, when it talked about being sealed by God, it means to be sealed by God is to be verified as God's child. That means that you are verified as God's child because it said he had his name written across their forehead uh, as if they're branded with his name. That means that you are sealed. You are verified by God himself. I, that's enough for me all by itself to get excited about. And then defining factors of God's kingdom is one, it's righteousness. Two, it's peace. And three, it's joy. Can I tell you that because the government is upon the shoulders of God on tonight, you have righteousness in his government, you have peace in his government, and you have joy in his government. Can I tell you that the government of this world, the examples that Tara talked about tonight with, with the famine and, and, and the sex trafficking and all this craziness going on in, in, the, in the school system and life in, 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 in Hollywood and all this other stuff going on, that it is opposite of righteousness, it's unrighteousness in the government of this world. But the government that sits upon the shoulders of God, there's righteousness. The government of this world, it says that, that it is not peace. So if you don't have peace, it's, it's destruction. It, there's no peace. But the government that is on the shoulders of God, you have peace. And the government that's on the shoulder of God, you have joy. In this government of this world, it will try to take your joy down. Let me tell you something, it'll give you some happiness. Cause you know, we talk about happiness is limited, but joy is everlasting. So so in this worldly government, you can get some happy moments, but with the government of God, you have joy that is everlasting, joy that is unspeakable, joy that has, that just can bring so much joy in every situation of your life. Uh, the deep rooted and unaffected by earthly situations, but affects how we are able to respond here on this earth. I'm telling you right now, people of God, uh, the, the word tonight, Tara, thank you so much for sharing that, that 144,000, I, did, I didn't know that I did not know that, and again, that's 12 times 12, but actually, that would be 12,000 times 12,000, and that was 12 tribes the 12, 12 tribes of Israel. And Marvin read each 12 out, and then the others that you were talking about that's gonna be us because I, I look that's going to be us. You know, I, I told Marvin if I could prophesy my way into heaven, Jesus Christ, amen. But it's a lifestyle that we have to live, it's not this lip service that we do. I'm telling you right now, I'd rather see a believer then hear one. Amen. Amen. You, you got you got people that got good talk game and they can promote themselves very well and can package themselves very well and they have a form of godliness, but they're far from it. Amen. Because I'm telling you right now, I'd rather see, I'd rather see a believer than hear them just talk about themselves all the time. And in this month, we were also talking about um, government uh, the month of 12 means apostolic alignment and government. It is the month of perfection and that God's word is the seed and that our body is the ground. And when his word is planted inside of you, the things that you can produce from God's word on tonight, I'm telling you, thank you again so much, Tara. Uh, again, like Marvin was saying, not, not even about if we teach it or not, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's not about the messenger is about the message, amen? Because we talked about the different, the anointings and the giftings that each and every one of us have and how each God can give us all like the same word and the word could be peace 
and everybody gets the word peace, but the way you deliver it, he would have you to deliver it a different way, but the foundation of the word is peace. So we thank you tonight for being a messenger and a mouthpiece of God tonight to remind us of that the kingdom of God is at hand and that the, that the second coming of Christ, he is coming back. 